Okay, welcome to the Vetrasoft series with tutorials on how to use the Z directory. This is tutorial number two. In this episode, we're going to look, look at encryption and the very basic, simplest case where we're going to look at ROT13. I'm calling it ROT13 as the rotation of bytes. Very uh, primitive encryption. I hesitate to use the word encryption algorithm. Needs security. So I'm starting with a empty project and I've already pre-configured this. If I look at the project properties, I'm gonna I set the include directory to where the Z there includes environment variable is. Now this is set when you install the Z directory, so that'll point to the headers. For the linker, the to find the libraries, uh, I've put in an additional library directories, another uh, environment variable set by the Z directory installer, Zdir devlibs. And for the input we are going to need layers 0, 1, and 2 because uh, all of the encryption algorithms are in level 2. Okay, now let's uh, type in the code. I'm going to actually copy and paste this uh, make it a little bit quicker. It makes a couple of uh, basic variables we need for error processing and whatnot. Every program starts with Z start when you, for the Z directory and ends with a Z finish. Let me just put those in before we forget. Now, the object that will handle the ROT13 in encryption is defined in the header file zcrypt.h. All Z directory header files start with Z underscore, that's our convention. And the object for doing the actual encryption is rot 13 crypt underscore O. Once again, underscore O denotes a Z directory object instance. Okay, now let's have a string that we're going to encrypt. That will be the first thing I want to show you is a couple of functions, the input and output chunk size. Now, this denotes the block size in number of bytes or characters that the that is required for doing encryption or decryption uh, the converse case for output chunk size and what that means is if uh, this returns one then you can encrypt pretty much any size block now this comes in, uh, in this becomes important for the case of AES where the blocks have to be in chunks of 16 or 32 depending on the password but I'm going to show you that uh, this this is one for the case of ROT13 so uh, we're also going to do a set key and ROT13 doesn't take a key so we expect this to fail actually and of course Z directory functions that fail return uh, non-zero value. So after that we're going to do the encryption. Now let's just compile this and uh, see what it looks like at this point and run it. Let's run prog2. And there you have it. So ROT13 uses basically just single characters for input output. Set key failed because it doesn't take a key. So uh, some algorithms do take a key, others don't. Now for doing the encryption, the variable XROT encrypt will take the string object, SIN for the input variable. Note this line uh, where I'm setting the output variable to the contents of the input variable. This is to set the size because the encryptors really don't control the size. They just draw right directly into the string object and if it's not initialized uh, they can fail. They'll, they'll probably check for nulls uh, internally and, and fail if, uh, if the string object is not initialized and, and or if it's the wrong size. This sets it to the right size. Uh, there's more I could talk about this all day but let's let's move on. So after we're doing the uh, encryption, we're going to do the decrypt. And I'm going to take the output variable as the input. 
and a third string object as the output and if it if it succeeds we're going to dump it out if it not we're going to print an error message let's compile that and run it straight from the console and as you see here uh, the output from the encryption looks like that when we decrypt the encrypted we get the same original this is my secret message string so I can finally put in a line just to do a compare prove that they're exactly equal. I compare two string objects and the strings match.